Although deep mystical experiences do not, in general, occur without long preparation, direct intuitive insights are experienced by all of us in our everyday lives. We are all familiar with a situation where we have forgotten the name of a person or place or some other word and cannot produce it in spite of the utmost concentration. We have it on the tip of our tongue, but it just will not come out. Until we give up and shift our attention to something else, then suddenly, in a flash, we remember the forgotten name. No thinking is involved in this process. It is a sudden, immediate insight. In our everyday life, direct intuitive insights into the nature of things are normally limited to extremely brief moments. Not so in Eastern mysticism, where they are extended to long periods and, ultimately, become a constant awareness. The preparation of the mind for this awareness, for the immediate, non-conceptual awareness of reality, is the main purpose of all schools of Eastern mysticism and of many aspects of the Eastern way of life. During the long cultural history of India, China, and Japan, an enormous variety of techniques, rituals, and art forms have been developed to achieve this purpose, all of which may be called meditation in the widest sense of the word. The basic aim of these techniques seems to be to silence the thinking mind and to shift the awareness from the rational to the intuitive mode of consciousness. In many forms of meditation, this silencing of the rational mind is achieved by concentrating one's attention on a single item, like one's breathing, the sound of a mantra, or the visual image of a mandala. For most people, and especially for intellectuals, this mode of consciousness is a completely new experience. Scientists are familiar with direct intuitive insights from their research because every new discovery originates in such a sudden nonverbal flash. But these are extremely short moments which arise when the mind is filled with information, with concepts and thought patterns. On the other hand, in meditation, the mind is emptied of all thoughts and concepts and is thus prepared to function for long periods through its intuitive mode. When the rational mind is silenced, the intuitive mode produces an extraordinary awareness. The environment is experienced in a direct way without the filter of conceptual thinking. Eastern mysticism is based on direct insights into the nature of reality, and physics is based on the observation of natural phenomena in scientific experiments. In both fields, the observations are then interpreted, and the interpretation is very often communicated by words. Since words are always an abstract, approximate map of reality, the verbal interpretations of a scientific experiment or of a mystical insight are necessarily inaccurate and incomplete. Modern physicists and Eastern mystics alike are well aware of this fact. In physics, the interpretations of experiments are called models or theories, and the realization that all models and theories are approximate is basic to modern scientific research. Thus, the aphorism of Einstein, quote, As far as the laws of mathematics refer to reality, they are not certain. And as far as they are certain, they do not refer to reality. Unquote. Physicists know that their methods of analysis and logical reasoning can never explain the whole realm of natural phenomena at once and so they single out a certain group of phenomena and try to build a model to describe this group. In doing so, they neglect other phenomena, and the model will therefore not give a complete description of the real situation. The Eastern mystics, too, know that all verbal descriptions of reality are inaccurate and incomplete. The direct experience of reality transcends the realm of thought and language, and since all mysticism is based on such a direct experience, everything that is said about it can only be partly true. In physics, the approximate nature of all statements is quantified, and progress is made by improving the approximations in many successive steps. How, then, do the Eastern traditions deal with the problem of verbal communication? First of all, Mystics are mainly interested in the experience of reality, 
and not in the description of this experience. They are therefore generally not interested in the analysis of such a description, and the concept of a well-defined approximation has thus never arisen in Eastern thought. If, on the other hand, Eastern mystics want to communicate their experience, they are confronted with the limitations of language. Several different ways have been developed in the East to deal with this problem. Indian mysticism, and Hinduism in particular, clothes its statements in the form of myths, using metaphors and symbols, poetic images, similes and allegories. Mythical language is much less restricted by logic and common sense. It is full of magic and of paradoxical situations, rich in suggestive images and never precise, and can thus convey the way in which mystics experience reality much better than factual language. According to Ananda Koumara Swami, quote, Myth embodies the nearest approach to absolute truth that can be stated in words. Unquote. The rich Indian imagination has created a vast number of gods and goddesses whose incarnations and exploits are the subjects of fantastic tales, collected in epics of huge dimensions. The Hindu, with deep insight, knows that all these gods are creations of the mind, mythical images representing the many faces of reality. On the other hand, he or she also knows that they were not merely created to make the stories more attractive, but are essential vehicles to convey the doctrines of a philosophy rooted in mystical experience. Chinese and Japanese mystics have found a different way of dealing with the language problem. Instead of making the paradoxical nature of reality palatable through the symbols and images of myth, they prefer very often to accentuate it by using factual language. Thus, Taoists made frequent use of paradoxes in order to expose the inconsistencies arising from verbal communication and to show its limits. They have passed this technique on to Chinese and Japanese Buddhists who have developed it further. It has reached its extreme in Zen Buddhism with the so-called koans, those nonsensical riddles which are used by many Zen masters to transmit the teachings. Whenever the Eastern mystics express their knowledge in words, be it with the help of myths, symbols, poetic images, or paradoxical statements, they are well aware of the limitations imposed by language and linear thinking. Modern physics has come to take exactly the same attitude with regard to its verbal models and theories. They, too, are only approximate and necessarily inaccurate. They are the counterparts of the Eastern myths, symbols, and poetic images. For example, the same idea about matter is conveyed to the Hindu by the cosmic dance of the god Shiva as to the physicist by certain aspects of quantum field theory. Both the dancing god and the physical theory are creations of the mind. They are models to describe their author's intuition of reality.